In our last video, we looked at the 100 amp hour Power Queen battery, and I said that I was gonna make a battery box out of this Orange Harbor Freight case, and well, I did exactly that. So I just wanna show you a quick uh, overview of what I did and hopefully uh, inspire you guys to make some battery boxes of your own. My name is Mike K at MRD, you're watching Ham Radio Tube. So this case I picked up at Harbor Freight, I believe it's the 3800 Apache case, if I'm not mistaken, is maybe, I don't know, 25, 30 bucks or so. And that Power Queen 100 amp hour battery just fit absolutely perfect in here. I'm like, I, I have to make a battery box out of it. So on the outside, there's not too much. I went ahead and put a couple power poles here. These are on uh, one circuit here that's switched. And then I have another uh, yellow, uh, red and black power pole here that's on its own circuit. And then I have a uh, input for a solar charge controller. The solar charge controller is still a work in progress, but uh, hopefully in the next couple days or while you're watching this video, because it'll post on Friday while I'm at Hamcation, I'll be looking for a small solar charge controller. And then on this side, I went ahead and put this USB-C. Uh, it's got dual USB-C PDs and then it's got one QC 3.0 and then that is on its own switch as well. So pretty darn awesome. It weighs maybe 25 pounds, not much at all. Pretty easy to make, just use some step drill bits to drill the holes and stuff. Um, but let's show you what's, uh, what's inside. We'll, we'll give you a look at the mess of wires and how I built this. Uh, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. It's kind of a prototype, just hover, standing over it, not really knowing what the heck I'm gonna do with it. But, uh, and I made it with all spare parts that I had here in the shack anyway. So uh, let's dive in and take a look. Hold on to your butts. Look at that, a 100 amp hour battery fits in this case. That is insane because this particular battery is so small, it fits perfect. I haven't had to glue anything down like the battery or anything just because the, the foam here in the lid provides just enough kind of downward force to just hold it in place. I haven't had any problems with it moving around or anything. So very happy with the way this turned out. Like I said, I just kind of used spare parts uh, I opted to not use a fuse box and instead uh, went with these inline fuses for each uh, circuit so they kind of look like this. When they come together it's just one wire that's just in a, in a circle and you just cut it wherever you want and then you put in your blade fuse there so that's on each circuit. So this Anderson power pole is on one circuit and then I've actually got two different circuits going. Uh, there's a solar charge controller here. That's the joke of this thing, because I actually gave away a couple solar charge controllers like a week before I built this box, and I'm like, crap, I don't have any. But I have a couple, so one of these is what's in here right now. You can't really see it, but it's it's right there. Uh, it's, it's facing up with the heat sink there, uh, and I've got it wrapped with some Kapton tape. But this is only a five amp charge controller, so like kind of a joke for a 100 amp hour battery, but more proof of concept thing. So when I'm in Florida, um, as you're watching this video now, hopefully I will uh, be looking for a small, like 15 or 20 amp uh, charge controller that I can put in here. Uh, everything, all the, po all the positives are going directly to the positive of the battery. I don't have any, any busing going on in here other than um, I just wagoed the crap out of all these connections because you've got to make the wire connections to do the, to do the switches. Um, so I, I like to have switches. I don't like to just have uh, these ports live all the time. But so all, I've got one, two, three. There's, there's four circuits in here. And then I have, um, I also have a uh, temperature sensor that's going to the shunt. And uh, some of you may be asking, well, where's the voltmeter? That's a great question. It's right there on a tablet or on my phone that's filming right now. So this TBD smart shunt right here, all the negatives go through there. And then I used a way oversized uh, I think it's I think it's like a two gauge wire for the negative, but I was like well all the negatives are going through there So I'll just use a big wire because the only reason I actually ran out of the bigger ring terminals um, so I just grabbed the spare wire for the black and made it happen But this TBD smart shunt this Bluetooth smart shunt uh, I'm I'm planning on actually getting some silicone or something and gluing it to the side of the battery but I haven't yet because I went to buy another one of these on Amazon and they're sold out. 
and uh, we don't know when they're going to get them back. Even at the even at like their own website, they're sold out. But this is the TBD Smart Shunt. I did a video on this a few weeks ago. If you want to check it out, so everything that the battery is doing. I can just log in with my phone remotely because this is Bluetooth. It's always powered on, but it draws like no power at all. So I'm not worried about it draining the battery. And then like some of the wires for the shunt, like I've got them all zip tied here just because I didn't want to cut them because I, I use this for, I use the shunt for other projects as well. Um, so I'm not going to permanently do anything until I get another one of those shunts and hopefully they come in sooner than later. And like I said earlier, this is a, uh, this has two USB-C's and a USB 3.0 quick charge. I put this one initially in and then I, I actually swapped it out for this one that has a voltmeter on it. But I was charging my phone and I was like, well, I, I, I hate, like, I hate this older style. I'm, I've moved everything over to USB-C. So I'm like, well, having one USB-C kind of sucks. So I took this out again and uh, put that back on and I'm much happier with the two USB, but this has a voltmeter, which is nice to have, but I was like, well, this voltmeter isn't actually very accurate at all. So it's kind of pointless there. Um, another thing I'd like to improve upon this, I'm using, um, these are 20 amp uh, switches and it's, it's hard to find a bigger switch or, or this style switch uh, in, a, in a higher current. The biggest I've found is 25 amps. Um, I think I found a 30 amp, but it's a much bigger physical uh, switch. And I just like how small they are. And they're just, you know, they're, they're not obtrusive. Like when I built Jason's battery box, I put different switches on there and they kind of stick out pretty far. And, I'm not really a big fan, plus they have a blue light. I like the red light here, you know, even though that has a blue light, but um, I didn't design this for any high current. I've, I've used all, all the wiring in here for any kind of load. Um, these are actually 10 gauge wires here, and then I, I ended up having to splice this one because this wire wasn't quite long enough. Um, I think I spliced it with a 12 gauge, so any of the loads, either 10 or 12 gauge wire, but they're 20 amp switches, so running um, like a portable 12 volt cooler, ham radio stuff, obviously charging cell phones and tablets and stuff like that, and uh, being able to have a bit of uh, solar coming in as well as a nice thing. Um, probably, probably still a work in progress, but I just thought this was a really fun project. One thing to note though, this box is, is kind of thick when you start drilling it. It's, it's probably, maybe three sixteenths of an inch thick. Uh, so this wasn't able to get a really good purchase on the box when I drilled the holes. So you can't really see, I've, I've tidied it up quite a bit, uh, but I ended up having to use some JB Weld and I basically just put a bunch of JB Weld inside the hole and then um, I kind of lined underneath the lip of the switch and then just shoved it in. And then I took some paper towels and some rubbing alcohol and was able to clean it up really well. But you can still kind of see there's a little bit of gray um, like under the rim of that. But they've been, they've been holding, uh, holding fast so far. I've only, I mean, it's, I built this like three days ago. But uh, very happy with that. I, uh, hopefully that JB Weld will hold up uh, nicely. But yeah, and then I, of course, adorned it with a ham radio tube sticker, and that was already on there. I actually bought this box when I bought my ICOM 705 to use as like a go box for the 705, and I used it like twice for that, and it's been sitting in my closet ever since. So it's nice to just have spare parts, and now I have a 100 amp hour battery box, and uh, maybe you will too. The battery insider is only $300. It's kind of hard to not, so uh, <laughs> that's it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again on another episode of Ham Radio Tube 73, y'all.